Yeah, man, right here. Mentors. Fuck yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm just going to get the podcast started with our generic opening. Um, welcome to Daddy Home, the greatest podcast for people to listen to and stuff. Um, I'm Justin Jones. With me, of course, is Kiki Lee. She's back from wherever she was. I couldn't find you, Kiki, for like a long time. I was looking for you. I know. I, um, I don't know. I just got into some stuff. I told you my identity got stolen. Yeah, that was, that's crazy. Um, so I've been trying to, you know, just kind of find who I am. Um, so that's great. I don't want to waste any more time because we have a very special guest, as people can see if they're watching this um, live or if they're just listening, whatever. Um, so we have April Jones, who is an incredible um, filmmaker, uh, skateboarder, guitarist musician, just an amazing person, an iconic figure in the daddy home community. April, welcome to our show. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. Um, Honestly, I'm just going to get right to it. You have done something that I thought no one would ever do, and that is make a documentary about the greatest rape rock band ever, The Mentors. Yay. And thank you for that. I think a lot of people probably ask you why, why The Mentors, but why not the mentors? They're amazing. What they do, what they've created is a genre where they are number one. There are no other bands better than them at Rape Rock. Yeah, and that's exactly what I thought too. I'm like, why not? I mean, even if you yeah. don't like them, uh, they, like, they have influenced so many bands and they are just a part of like historic, historically influential in music history. So Absolutely. Like them or not, they exist and they help have helped to cultivate, you know, what we call heavy metal and punk today, like, you know, yeah. just CG Allen or whatever. So Yeah, actually I was thinking about your documentary and like for me, the top three documentaries like of this, of like punk music would be probably like the decline of Western civilization, hated, uh, GG Allen hated, and then your documentary, The Mentors, Kings of Sleaze. Those are the top yeah. three. Mm -hmm. Like what you did was put together such an amazing, you got an amazing amount of footage, the interviews, everything about it. It's a, it's a classic. It's going to be a cult classic forever for the rest of the time the earth is alive. Your documentary yeah. is going to be there and people will watch it and be like, this is incredible. Well, thank you. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I yeah. don't, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like my, my El Duce stencil I made. Yeah, it's well, pretty that's pretty awesome. awesome. Yeah, he's close to my heart. Yeah, as Aww. it should be. Yeah, smell my armpit vapor. <laughs> oh my God. No, uh, me and Justin watched the documentary together. Uh, yeah. and it was, it was a lot of fun. And I, I was just really blown away by what a fantastic job you did like it, making this film was just it was it was fun to watch like it was it was actually fun we were sitting there we were laughing we were crying yeah we I were, cried uh Justin's blood sugar was like through the roof <laughs> it was, it was really true good. yeah it did <laughs> it was just a great story and you really got like so many different angles about the mentor's career and their story even going even dealing with like kill alan wrench which like i didn't even think he'd want to do it but that's awesome that you got to interview him even though he was a little bit snarky and yeah. that's how he is i don't even know how i got that like on social media he said that it, it, he lived in germany and i was <laughs> like well i'll reach out to him anyways yeah uh, but people were reaching out to me they're like dude like don't get hit by a train <laughs> <laughs> yeah really he's i don't know he he seems like a bit of a sociopath but i don't know that was a little I, awkward i took like two bong hits right before the interview <laughs> yeah oh shit wow so like, uh how how do i proceed with this it was like the most awkward interview ever i was like is he fucking with me or is he like answering serious yeah it was hard to tell he's he has like this very cold like almost like a serial almost like a serial killer kind of stare about him and yeah I thought it was awesome. And I mean, it honestly, like, it didn't seem like you were trying to blame him for anything. You were just kind of like, hey, you know, you were the last person to see El Duce alive. You know, what's that like? How does it feel? Like, 
not that you're like, oh, you're the one that did it. You pushed him in front of a train with nothing stupid like that. But I guess he he's so used to people blaming him, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. You know, April, um, you just talked about one of the most awkward interviews you had making this film. But like, what was who was your favorite person to interview? Like, who was the most fun to interview that there was like no anxiety at all? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, just the first person that comes to my mind is like Dr. Heathen Scum because yeah. Like, yeah. He's, he's such a dork, but he, and he's so <laughs> lovable too. And like, coincidentally, we have the same birthday, which is April Fool's Day. Wow. <laughs> oh my, oh my God. My birthday is March 31st. <laughs> yeah. Aries. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's why you're fiery. There yeah. we go. Yes. Well, well, my birthday is August 1st. Hmm. Wow. We're all on the cusp. (laughs) Yeah. So there. And like Hunter Jackson was pretty cool. I was wondering about that because sometimes I've met him before and he seems very like he doesn't want to talk to people or he doesn't want to like deal with people. But that was cool. Like that he actually sat down and interviewed with you. I know the clip wasn't, it was only like a minute or a few minutes long, but. So I met him at a porno release party. (laughs) <laughs> and so he had a funny about a funny story about uh el duce leaving his dildo in the guar bus <laughs> oh yeah that definitely I, stood out kiki and i are both huge guar fans so yes hunter jackson being in the documentary was like a bonus it was amazing and then i did hear the story in the docu in the rockumentary and i it's definitely something people should watch it for because it's a funny ass story it's amazing yeah, that guy too, like not a lot of people know, but he is so incredibly talented. Like he's an artist, like he does for wrestling, like he does wrestling. I know. It's it's amazing. Yeah, he's he does like prosthetics now, I think, for people. Like he builds body parts. Really? So, that's what I think that's what Hunter does, yeah. Wow. Or he let or he left Guar for a while to do that to make some extra money, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure the details, but he lives here in the LA area. And uh, after the film, I went to visit him and gave him a DVD and stuff. So, oh, that's great. And I got to see like the vault, like the very first ever like Guar poster made that was like hand drawn by him. Like, wow. he oh my God. Through all the characters. Like, he's a comic book artist. He's yeah. so incredibly talented. Definitely like an underrated character. In- oh, sure. yeah, definitely. I mean, but he was there pretty much from the beginning of Guar. So, I mean, he's one of the originals when you think about it. Um, but let's not, I'm getting off track here. I'm sorry. Um, was there anyone that you wanted to interview that you couldn't book or couldn't get? Yeah, so there is um, actually rumor has it that Tom Petty used to go to <laughs> the strip club or the, um, I'm drawing a brain fart. What's the, the, um, the, 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 the live porno theater that El Duce used to work at? Oh, I don't know. And then they, he would go and like uh, sit, sit with El Duce in the sound room in the back. Um, so I was like trying to get an interview wow. with Tom Petty. And then like I lagged on it. And then like he died. And I was like, <laughs> oh my oh, God. No. Oh. That's the worst. Oh, oh no. shit. That's going to be like an urban legend, I guess, from now on. You'll never know the truth about that. I know. I, I believe it though. Tom Petty for as um, clean cut and like as radio friendly as he was, I bet he was a real dirt ball, a real sleazy kind of guy who like, I mean, he's from Florida, you know, <laughs> he's just a dirty, he's a bad boy. So him and El Duce probably got along really well. Yeah, and you know, I was super stoked to interview Brian Slagle because the mentors go way back with like Brian Slagle, Metal Blade Records, and then like Metallica, which yeah. is a huge like family friendly household name. But it's like, oh, they were like inspired by the mentors, you know? So that would have been kind of a cool interview too. But I was stoked to interview mm. Brian Slagle about all that, the early days. Wow. Yeah. I mean, because you think about it, what the mentors started in the 70s, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, they influenced a lot of metal and headbangers. And because I think a lot of people think that they're just kind of like a funny, they're not talented, but they're really great musicians. Mm-hmm. They're, the guitar player, um, was it Sicky Whitebeater? Yeah. Fucking shreds. He is incredible. When I saw them live, he was doing moves where like he put the guitar behind his head, like playing. He was just like, wah, wah, wah. it was, yeah. it blew my fucking mind. 
Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, he was, he's and he was so a, drunk. I know. He's and also, he was he's on the bottle. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. Oh, he was so drunk, but he was just shredding, like playing the most incredible licks, and, and just like I couldn't believe it. Like I couldn't imagine being as drunk as he was and playing anything, or even standing up, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Well, during during the tour, actually, he had to play a show sitting down because he was so wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's amazing! Yeah. Oh man, that is wild. And then, did people? Did you have anyone turn you down for interviews? Um. Yeah, I think. Um, uh, I f- I forget off the top of my head. There was a couple okay. people who who wasn't really into it, or like, w- like was into like was. Stoked I was making the documentary, but didn't want to be associated. Oh, that's so lame. That's so lame. I know. So speaking of people who um, were kind of against it, I I think Antifa like wanted to fight you or something. What? true? So it's funny. So after the film was made, actually, they did an anti-Antifa tour. It was actually (laughs) like right around the release. So like I released it like in the height of the Me Too movement. Like the Me Too movement had not happened when I was making the film and they were already offensive. So like, oh, was wow. watching and I was like, oh shit, I have to release this, you know? And so they did the anti-Antifa tour and like their shows were getting shut down. Like this venue got like a hundred phone calls from the community, like how dare you, like, you know? And, and I got those recordings. Anyway, That's so I awesome. made some separate Oh edit. my God. Um, but yeah i had a few film festivals that didn't want to run it oh Um, no but you know i actually i thought i'd get more backlash than i did i was hoping for more i mean i'm a skateboarder i'm used to offending people anyways yeah totally (laughs) like let's go (laughs) yeah and like the bad press would have been good too like any press is good press really so yeah i think that uh you're you're just such a such an iconic person for the underground yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you just you just go for it and it is so oh, awesome yeah. and and yeah. i don't know i feel like as a as a woman trying to get involved in in this kind of stuff it's just it's so awesome to see that representation of like women women are cool you hear that daddy home women are cool yeah yeah hell yeah don't be all like oh i hate women they're stupid no women are cool get with it okay it's 20 it's 2022 get with it i was really surprised because uh i i am a fan of the mentors but i wasn't really enlightened to everything that they had done up to this point between the 70s and and currently it's just been this revolving door of musicians and and (laughs) talented amazing funny people and i actually didn't realize that there was actually a female uh musician in the mentors at one point which i thought was really cool you got to witness that yeah and that was a really important interview too for people who don't really know it's or you know about the mentors like no like it's a joke (laughs) yeah yeah some people Uh, think some people think that they're like yeah they're they're going out raping people and and killing and being crazy but it's it's an act it's just fun like it's theater it's a performance and it's amazing i mean they're good musicians putting on a good show like just get over it it's creative expression and it has the right to exist whether you like it or not exactly that's the great thing about like this i don't want like hype america that's the great thing about america hey freedom of speech yeah no but it's cool like people should be allowed to kind of create whatever they want to create they're not hurting anybody it's just fun. They're having a good time. Yeah, they're like 16-year-old boys. Exactly. <laughs> Who are, yeah, they've been 16 for like 50 years or whatever. And it's funny, when I went on tour with them, I don't think they expected like a skateboarder because they're like, oh shit, she's a 16-year-old boy too. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely like tough. You're not someone to like fuck around with. Yeah. Which is awesome. Dude, when you were on tour, like I have to imagine there was like some crazy stuff that went down. Was there are there any like crazy? Is there like any one or two crazy stories you want to share, or you that you can share? Yeah, actually, there's uh, a few things. Actually, one interview that didn't make it in. I'm actually planning on doing like a fan based uh, edit, but oh. I interviewed someone in the men's bathroom while taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
I was also groped by a one-armed midget. Oh, creepy. And, uh, that's That's been on my bucket list for a while. Yeah, so. with his stub, I was like, well, I was standing on like a stool, like, you know, like with my camera. And he was like, oh, here, let me help you. And he put his mm. stub like on my ass. Uh, <laughs> but that's not helping at all. No, no, thank you. And How then, gross. <laughs> It was hilarious. And then he was actually one of the musicians like playing, he like playing guitar. <laughs> yeah, with the stuff. And then uh, Sicky was really drunk once and he like, like he then scum went to like use the bathroom one in the hotel. And there was like the only roll of toilet paper had like a poop smudge on it. Ew. Sicky. And we're like, oh, Sicky's like, who was it be? Like, yeah, right. But then, oh. and then we were like, it was a bummer. We're like, how do we like get to the toilet paper? So next time Sicky got up to use the bathroom, he's like really slow. I like rushed in there real quick to pee. And I like took my tampon out, like left it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's just good old fashioned ribbing. That's just some good old fun. Come on. Yeah. And I'm I'm stone cold sober too. So. Oh my God. Damn. Um, Did you... Did you have any difficulties with like um, opening acts or anything? Did people ever give you a hard time? I guess being a female in that environment. Cause I feel, I don't know like how many women come out to mentor shows. Well, That's a good point. Yeah, I don't really think I got any, um, I don't, I think everyone was super stoked and super supportive, but also sometimes when people aren't, I just, I don't know. I just, yeah. you know, yeah, just, fuck okay. Negative energy doesn't exist. Like, I don't accept it, you know? Like, I'm just like yeah. a little, little jolly little world. So I don't know. But everyone was yeah. cool. So I wanted to ask you, um, where did you go to film school? <laughs> well, actually, um, I went to the community college in Portland. Mm. So I was actually, I wanted to go to film school, but I went to like one of the fancy film schools to apply and mm. I was rejected. Because I, I was rejected from student loans because I didn't have credit. So then I couldn't afford to go to school. And so I was like, fuck that. So yeah. I volunteered at the, the public access place. And then I went to the community college, which, you know, grants paid for that, but not like a, like a university. Grants don't pay for that yeah. shit. Yeah. So um, with the public access, I... Uh, put out 40 almost 40 short documentaries in five years on a zero dollar budget and that kind of uh, erupted into this heavy metal public access tv series so I would interview bands that would come through Portland like all the local bands but then bigger bands like Exodus, Overkill, The Mentors, uh, Diamond Head, fucking Raven, Fang, like you know name it like and then the bigger, um, the bigger uh, publishing companies or whatever, you know, like Metal Injection, blah, 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 like those, they would only post the bigger bands. So I would make an episode with like a big band, like Overkill. And then at the end, I would put interviews with like the smaller no-name bands. So awesome. Sure yeah. They were, got promoted. Because that yeah. was my goal. I was like, I'm sick of like seeing my friends, like not, you know, like, I have energy. I have camera equipment. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. And so yeah. I mentors and that's how I met them was through my public access show. Do that's you ever, so awesome. do you ever flex on that film school that you tried to go to? Like, <laughs> like, yo, fuck you guys. Look at me now. I don't need you. Right. But I think that's kind of a good message too. Like maybe you don't need to spend all this money and go to a university and, and whatever, because look at what you've created and look at all the work you've done with, with very little money, you know, to start you out. It's amazing. And I think it's like a good story of like perseveration, perseveration. Yes. That thing where like, you just don't quit it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like passion project. You know, if you want something like no excuses, like, like take your excuse and like mm-hmm. use that as, as your problem. Like you need a problem to solve, right? Like I don't have money. Well, you don't need money. I mean, nowadays, like when I did all this, I was working on mini DV tape. Yeah, I remember that. And that was even longer to like log the footage on tape. Yeah. Now it's so much quicker. So 
Yeah, it's way yeah. easier now than having to come up with like your your EDL list and like yeah. sitting there. I don't know. Did you do like real to real? Oh no, I didn't do that. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm not that. Old. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I mean, I didn't think you were that old. I was just. I, was I just know that sucks when like you have to do like the real to real stuff. Oh yeah, but uh, but now we have phones, so like we don't even need you know, and it's not even about fancy equipment. It's about the storytelling too. Yeah, so. totally. Do you think? Well, I think uh, there's a sort of like this um, perception about the mentors that they're sort of like a racist band. I think people see the hoods and then they're like, oh, they're in the clan. And but really, it's like they're, it's an executioner look. But when you think about their music, they never I don't think they've ever said the N word in any of their songs or really done anything racist. So for me, it's like maybe the mentors could get into the Hall of Fame. Because if they have like John Lennon, he wrote a song about like women is the n-word or something well, bob guns, dylan guns and roses uses the n-word that's right and those so, people I mean, who are picketing the mentors probably have guns and roses shirts you know what i mean like yeah totally and it's like <laughs> if they can get into the rock and roll hall of fame maybe the mentors should too and yeah. i think maybe that's gonna be my project that i'm gonna try to get them in hey we could start a petition yeah i might have to Hmm. Yeah. Something we to think get, about. We can get some letters of recommendation from like maybe James Hetfield or something. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, That'd well, be... a famous story about he was at a mentor show and he had broken his arm from skating and there was a, a pick picketing outside and he had to go around in the back to like escape. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's crazy. It's crazy to me, like all the bands that all the bands now that probably when they were younger went to these shows and they were hanging out like moshing doing everything and like really looking up to the mentors and then they went on to become superstars a lot of them like you said Metallica and I mean who knows who else because I mean that's what that was like LA California there's a lot of big there's a lot of musicians around there probably like the Red Hot Chili Peppers I could see them hanging out at the shows and like Trent Reznor Trent Aldu Reznor Alduce was in one of the Trent Reznor uh, the Nine Inch Nails documentary at the end Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, the mentors really do like have an impact on so many different musicians. It's true. And El Duce just, I do comedy. Like I do open mic comedy. I do stand up. So does Kiki. Um, El Duce is hilarious. He's so funny. He is really funny. And his persona, like on the Wally George show or on Jerry Springer, it's so as a character, it's really funny to watch. Like he's pretty fucking hilarious. I think you really captured that with the documentary pretty well too, because I, I didn't really know them, their personalities as much, but it kind of showed like how he kind of struggled with some depression and some addiction issues. But then it also kind of showed how how much fun he could be and how how uh, everyone thought he was just a blast to hang out with and I thought you did a really great job of just kind of getting both sides of it you know thank you you know it, it is lighthearted. you know like even though I mean as far as the racism thing you were talking about like mm -hmm. it's like your grandpa making jokes you know what I mean but like they were an integrated band like yeah they really were act on acid and you know mad dog <laughs> like but it's just like those old jokes that you hear like your grandpa say, you know? Oh, yeah. Like when he was on the street, like doing a joke for a quarter, he had that welfare yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. line joke, which actually is a pretty funny joke. But I can see how nowadays people would be very like, oh, that's not PC. You can't say that. But yeah, fuck PC. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fuck PC. That's what this, this show is all about, that we don't we're not politically correct. We just say whatever we want and do whatever we want. Interview who we want. That's why yeah. I was, when I saw that you had made this documentary and I like, was researching you more and more, I was like, wow, I, like, I really, really, really want to have April Jones on our show. Like your voice and like what you're putting out there is so important. And so it's just fun. I think yeah. more people, more people should be aware of the stuff that you do. Actually. Oh, I'm sorry, April. I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh, no, I was just saying thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I wanted to bring up your Instagram. Because it is it is pretty iconic looking. I, I have to say, uh, yeah. you have tons of pictures. You talked about skateboarding. I, do you want to take a minute to talk about skateboarding? Because I feel like that's a passion for you. Yeah, sure. I mean, I grew up skating, you know, since I was like 
12, I don't know, probably earlier. So I've been skating like for about 25, 30 years. I don't know, showing my age here. But um, yeah, I, I grew up kind of like in the DIY realm of skateboarding, like not the mainstream. Like I don't watch the old, like the X Games, <laughs> like at the Olympics. I don't know who rides for Nike, like, you know? So yeah, yeah. I'm in like the DIY, get your hands dirty. Don't blow it out. Like skating pools, backyard pools, you know, like, like that type of like digging out ditches and getting chased by the police yeah so um i'm from the diy up in portland burnside is like one of the first the, the grandfather diys and that erupted in like enormous diy culture all over the world and a lot of them are being demolished because they're illegal mm. right so i moved down to southern california and there's an iconic one here that's been shut down for seven years so I joined in the fight to help them. I started harassing the council office. I'm like, I'm a journalist. I demand to know what's going on. Like, we need answers. You have mm -hmm. the entire world, like, wanting to know what's up. And then I got an interview with them. And then, like, from there, they erupted a feature-length documentary about their, like, bureaucratic battle. Mm. Wow. So that's what I'm working on now. But That's awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what other projects do you have going on? Or what other projects should people be aware of? That you have done or that, you, that you're doing now, I guess. Yeah, so that's the one. It's called Concrete Law. And okay. so, um, like, um, I guess to name drop, so um, uh, Tony Hawk is interviewed in it. He actually donated to the skate park in the early days, like, even knowing it was illegal. <laughs> and, um, like, Mike Watt is in it. Mm. Like, um, like, the community, like, businesses, like, we interview the council office. So, you know, like, and a lot of the people are in like punk and metal bands. So it's like sure. a huge music, you know, just very community driven and it's really awesome. Yeah, I think it's gonna be another successful documentary. It sounds like it's a really fun topic, really interesting topic. And with the interview that you're gonna get, I can't see why it's not gonna like win festival awards and things like that. Um, so I don't mean to keep like kissing your ass. I just really enjoy your stuff. So yeah, sorry, no. Sorry, I've... sorry that I'm totally like. Uh, Justin, I your love, dick. I love watching you kiss her ass. I don't know what it is about it. It's just really getting me. Getting Damn me it! Going. I just think she, I think she's fucking awesome. It's no, I. She's <laughs> definitely awesome. Honestly, it's. I think it's so cool that. Um, like when I was younger, uh, when I was like in middle school, I, I would skateboard a bunch. And and that's actually what got me into punk uh, when I was really yeah. young. And then I was like, I'm going to buy a guitar and I'm not going to learn how to play it. I'm going to start playing out. And that was kind of my origin story. And it's just it's so cool how you've taken, uh, you know, that skateboarding culture and and turned it into like a, a professional thing. Um, which I don't think too many people are really capable of, of pulling off this well. So I'm going to kiss your ass too. You deserve it. <laughs> well, my secret is I still have a day job. Oh, that helps. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're that like helps. Batman. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually like this film, I actually got funding for the mentors. I didn't have funding. I was like sound camera <laughs> light, lighting you know like yeah I was everything and so now I got to hire a professional cinematographer pe professional audio person like stuff like that like with the mentors film there was even like some footage that I didn't technically have permission to use but I talked to a lawyer who was like well technically journalists have uh, something mm -hmm. called the fair use act right so I had to like you know, the, the Jerry Springer footage, I tried contacting them for permission, like multiple times, didn't get back to me. Talked mm. to a lawyer, he's like, oh, I, I approve this under the Fair Use Act. Yeah. That's also the reason like I couldn't submit to like Netflix, you know? So yeah. Amazon is cool. I'm glad it's on Amazon, but like that kind of limited, like not having a budget for the mentors kind of limited uh, distribution a little bit. Yeah. So even with this film, like I haven't paid myself one penny. Like all, the budget completely, a hundred percent went to uh, sound, you know, uh, vid, like camera photographers, stuff like that. So, I mean, I have a good job. I'm like, whatever. It doesn't matter, anyways. You only live once. Like, yeah. do what you want to do. Exactly. 
Yeah, but um, so I want to. Oh, go ahead, Kiki. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I keep interrupting, and I don't mean to. But uh, so you had mentioned that Netflix, it isn't available on Netflix. But where where can people that maybe haven't seen this awesome documentary, where can they go to find it? Because they need to watch this. Well, most people have Amazon Prime. So if you have mm -hmm. Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free. Awesome. Or, or you can go to my website. I have DVDs. I also have uh, mugs. Ooh. <laughs> mugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so yeah, I have like DVDs and uh, like koozies, stuff like that. And posters, like anyone who orders a DVD, I always throw in free shit anyways, just to like get it out there. Yeah, awesome. that's smart. Was there any like type of merchandise you wanted to put out, but you weren't able to? Like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I actually ordered some like 4F cl club koozies recently, um, which are pretty cool. But I was like, what kind of merchandise should I make for the documentary? Because people were reaching out. It was like, hey, you got more merchandise. Like all you mm -hmm. have are like DVDs and posters. And I was like, butt plugs. <laughs> oh my Obviously. god. Obviously. Right? Yeah. I was like, oh God, those things will sell like hotcakes, right? So I like, I like made a design, you know, and I sent it to this butt plug company, <laughs> like, you know, like for the film, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay, cool. Let us, we'll get back to you. And then he got back to me. and was like, oh, I'm sorry. Your order has been canceled. And I was like, but why? They're like, because <laughs> it's the mentors. I'm like, yeah and they're like well we don't want to make them because we don't ha want to have a bunch of people picketing our business and oh my god i was like you're offended they're like well no we're not offended we we just don't want the cancel culture i was like but you're enabling the cancel culture so you are the cancel culture and you just canceled me <laughs> and honestly like would people even know like where it came from like that's what i said i was like i i like i'm a professional i will sign an agreement that will mm -hmm make it completely zipped up you know like i have a document right now right now. i'll have a lawyer like whatever yeah and they're like no no and i was like but you make butt plugs yeah like <laughs> so what did they look like though butt plugs yeah what yeah. were they like a special like design did they have like a hood on them or <laughs> you know, i think it was the hoods ah uh. so if it were like maybe it was like a 4f logo maybe it wouldn't have been so controversial but then it wouldn't have been as cool yeah but even if, my t-shirts i got some t-shirts made and the, the company was like hey can you make sure um you don't tag us in any social media posts i'm like absolutely <laughs> that's ridiculous no, but no problem i understand yeah but like a poor like a butt plug like like what? who fucking cares but they work for the porn industry and the mentors are the porn industry, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And you think about it. Yeah, they really are. The porn are. Yeah. yeah, they are. Like the fuck movie and things like that. So that was kind of funny. Wow. Well, um, I really appreciate you taking um, time out of your very busy schedule because I know how busy you are. And we've been playing this for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, before we go, is there anything you want to plug in particular? I know you have your Instagram, you have a website. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, go to dreamevilpictures.com and like follow what I'm doing. I also do like separate like little like event coverages. I'll cover like in the height of COVID, I covered an outdoor punk rock show in the desert, you know, oh. after being quarantined for like three months. I'm like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so I do like little stuff here and there for the community. Um, you know, I just document like my friend's organic farm you know like just like little stuff. cool always putting out content i'm always making art or whatever like get involved also go see the mentors like they're still playing and dr heathen scum is getting pretty old yeah <laughs> i saw them i saw them about three years ago yeah in, ba in baltimore and i was like i'm probably never going to see them again because yeah. like they were they were so wasted and like at the age that they're at now it's like i don't know how much longer not that i want to like say anything negative but i don't know how much longer they're going to be touring for yeah but it was a blast i had such a good time it was definitely one of the loudest shows i've ever been to it was so fucking loud it was great that's awesome i think the loudest show i've been to is man of war oh yeah I can, oh yeah uh, yeah definitely that's so a great sh great I show 
I drove 3,000 miles for that show. No oh my way. God. I had 86 hatchback. <laughs> oh, so worth it though. I made a documentary about it too. <laughs> so. Whoa, Man, that's amazing. Do you, I just wanted to ask you real quick. Um, I know I'm trying to like wrap this up. I'm sorry, but I have like so many questions. Do, are, is your um, cable access show going to be available on YouTube or anything or? Well, it's funny at the time I was really bad at like promoting. I didn't even have a YouTube channel at the time. So most right. of it's on public access. But I have a bunch of hard drives I'm actually going through to like to to post them up like some are on YouTube and some are on Vimeo and they're kind of spread all out but I'm going to do kind of a re-release because I'm just guessing 40 there might even be like 40 plus yeah that'd be fun to watch too yeah so it'd be cool um yeah like one of my favorite interviews was actually uh Fang I interviewed Sammy Town and I was on crutches at the time so I'm like, like with my, my crutch, you know, and my camera bag and like, I'm filming the show and he's like, where's April? April <laughs> crippled. <laughs> oh, thank you. oh my God. Uh, you know, good times. I've made a lot of good friends, um, just through the, the filmmaking process. And I'm really grateful for everyone's support and, and for people like you too, like, you know, oh, stop. Come on. Aww, now Aww. you ah jeez. Stop. Aww. <laughs> well, um, you're in charge of recording this, so I guess like you should stop it whenever you want to stop it. But thanks for um thanks again for everything. Really appreciate it. Yes, it was it was really so awesome to spend time with you and get to know you a little bit better, April. I, I loved your film and I'm looking forward to the next one. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. All right, thank you.